Everything starts somewhere, although many physicists disagree. There is the constant desire to find out where. Where is the point where it all began? Later than that, the disk world was formed. Drifting onwards through space, atop four elephants, on the shell of a giant turtle, the great Atui. It was some time after its creation when most people forgot that the very oldest stories of the beginning are, sooner or later, about blood. At least that's one theory. The philosopher Didactylus has suggested an alternative hypothesis. Things just happen, what the hell? And so our story begins in Ankh Morpork, the twin city of proud Ankh and pestilent Morpork, the biggest city in Discworld. A city where magic is just another job, and where the Tower of Art of the Unseen University for Wizards looms over all the dark, narrow streets. Our story begins on a midwinter festival bearing a remarkable similarity to your Christmas. And so, it was the night before Hog's Watch. Jack chopped down what was the world's last beanstalk, adding murder and ecological terrorism to the theft, enticement and trespass charges already mentioned. And all the giant's children didn't have a daddy anymore. But he got away with it and lived happily ever after without so much as a guilty twinge about what he had done. Which proves that you can be excused just about anything if you're a hero, because no one asks inconvenient questions. And now... It's time for bed. Susan? Yes? You know last week when we wrote letters to the hog father? Yes. Well, will he really come? And when's he coming here? Does it matter if you get the presents anyway? Yes. Well, if you don't believe in the hog father, there won't be any presents. Thought so. But while children everywhere sleep fitfully in the belief that a jolly fat man is about to deliver their presence, not necessarily everyone is entering into the Hog's Watch spirit, especially in a city where there is a guild for everything.
The doors are locked. The windows are barred. The dog does not appear to have woken up. The squeaky floorboards haven't. I really doubt that you are a ghost. And gods generally do not announce themselves so politely. You could, of course, be death. But I don't believe he bothers with such niceties. Besides, I'm feeling quite well. Hmm. Good evening. Good evening, Lord Downey. You appear to be a spectre. Our, Our nature is, is not a matter for discussion. We, we offer you a commission. You wish someone inhumed? Brought to an end. Our scale of fees... The payment will be three million dollars. No questions asked, I assume. No questions answered. But does the suggested fee represent the difficulty involved? The client is heavily guarded? Not guarded at all, but almost certainly impossible to delete with conventional weapons. We like to know for whom we are working. We are sure you do. We need to know your name or names in strict client confidentiality, of course. You may think of us as the auditors. Really? What do you audit? Everything. We maintain the logical order of the universe. I think we need to know a little more than that. We are the people with three million dollars. We need to know where, when, and of course, who. The location is not on any map, and we need the task to be completed by sunrise tomorrow. This is essential. As for the who, let us call him the Fat Man. But won't he be out on his rounds? a joke. We have no sense of humor. There are some who say that this person does not exist. He must exist. How else could you so readily recognize his picture? And many are in correspondence with him. He would be difficult to find. You will find persons on any street who can tell you his approximate address. Yes, of course, but uh, as you say, they can hardly give a map reference. Even then, how would the fat man be inhumed? A glass of poisoned sherry, perhaps? You misunderstand the nature of employment. How do I misunderstand you exactly? We pay. You find the ways and means. How can I contact you? We will contact you. We know where you are. We know where everyone is. Winvo? Is Mr. Tea Time still in the building? Oh, no, John. Oh, no, John. 
Go away. I don't do that stuff anymore. Yes, Twyla? I'm afraid of the monster in the cellar, Susan. It's going to eat me up. What, again? Girl out here with a poker. What are you doing? Twyla said she's afraid of a monster in the cellar, Mrs. Gator. And you're going to attack it with a poker, eh? Yes. Uh, Susan's our governess. <laughs> she beats up monsters with a poker. Actually, it's a very clever idea. My daughter gets it into her head there's a monster in the cellar. You go in with a poker, make a few bashing noises while the child listens, and everything's all right. Uh, is that what you're doing, Susan? Yes, Mrs. Gator. This I've got to watch by Io. It's not every day you see monsters beaten up by a girl. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 Come in, Mr. Tea Time. Oh, Carter, just put it on the table over there, will you? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'll go and fetch another cup directly, sir. What? Your visitor, sir. What visitor? Oh, for when Mr. Tea... Mr. Tea Time? That's pronounced Teatarme, sir. Everyone gets it wrong, sir. How did you get in here? Easily. I got mildly scorched on the last few feet, of course. The dog seems to like you. I get on well with animals, sir. I have a report here that says that you nailed Sir George's dog to the ceiling. I couldn't have it barking while I was working, sir. Some people would have drugged it. Oh. But I definitely fulfilled the contract. I checked Sir George's breathing with a mirror as instructed. Apparently his head was several feet from his body at that point. That was all right, wasn't it, sir? It, um, lacked elegance. Ah, thank you, sir. I'm always happy to be corrected. I shall remember that next time. It is about the next time that I wish to talk. As a matter of interest, how would you go about inhuming this gentleman? To worry, she always wins. Huh. <laughs> A 
Uh, very well done. Very psychological. A clever idea, that, bend in the poker. I expect you're not afraid anymore, eh, my girl? No. Yeah, very psychological. Susan says, don't get afraid, get angry. Oh, yes, thank you, Susan. And now, if, you, if you'd all like to come back into the uh, parlour, I mean, the drawing room. That's convincing, the way she bent the poker like that. Have they all gone, Tyler? Yes, Susan. Good. to monsters. And now it's back to bed for you, my girl. Difficult, sir. Certainly. But I have devoted some time to it, sir. You mean you've actually sat down and thought out how to inhume the hawk father? Ah, oh, yes, sir. And the soul cake duck. And death, sir. They're imaginary creatures. Makes it a challenge. I suppose I just see things differently from other people. We may be able to see the complaint of Sir George's estate against you with regard to his dog rather differently and approve your graduation to full membership of the guild. Take the dark, sir. Wear black, sir. If you agree to undertake this contract. With due elegance, of course. With elegance guaranteed, sir. Uh, Mr. Tiatime, you have actually applied yourself to a study of ways of killing death. Only as a hobby, sir. Uh, but then some people might say that he is technically immortal. Everyone has their weak points, sir. He's not coming. Let's go. Sit down, will you? The assassins are always fashionably late. Because of style, right? What's this? You never said anything about him being an assassin. It's tea time. He's paying top rates. We can wait for top rates. Tea time? I've heard he's uh, mental. And he's got a funny eye. I don't understand this. How long has this place had waitlists? Good evening. Do have another drink while we wait for the other members of our little troop.
wizard. No, I'm not. I'm incognito. Yeah, right. You're just someone in a pointy hat. Mr. Sidney here is indeed a wizard. A student, anyway. This is my brother Banjo. This is Chicken Wire. I didn't want to come. Mr. Sidney's down on his luck at the moment. Hence his willingness to join our little venture. So what's the job? We don't do jobs. We perform services. And the service will earn each of you $10,000. No one said anything about there being magic in all of this. Do the voice on it! Do the voice on it! No! Not the voice! Hit it on the head with the poker! Not the poker! This is a friendly warning. Understand, because it's Hogswatch. Why? A witch or something? I'm just... something. Now, you won't be around here again, will you? Or we'll put your head under the blanket. It's got fluffy bunnies on it. Fluffy bunnies? No! Go away and stop bothering me. That wasn't as much fun as the one last month. You know, the one when you kicked him in the trousers. Just go to sleep now. Locks. We have a locksmith. Who? Mr. Brown. And you can help me carry this. It's rather heavy. What is this? This is my brother, Banjo. Does it do tricks? No. He can lift two men up in each hand by the necks. Uh. <laughs> it looks like a volcano. Really? You want to be fashionably late, do you? I do so hope we're going to be friends, Mr. Medium Dave. It really hurts to think I might not be among friends. Then I suppose we might as well make a start. Hello, my name is Violet. And I have been your tooth fairy for this evening. There ain't nothing valuable, you know. Nothing valuable. Only a few bags of... Cheat. I know. My name's Tia Tormi. What's your name, sir? Ernie. Yes, Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, gentlemen. This is my friend, Ernie. He's going to be our driver for tonight. Put her in the back, Banjo. Uh, uh, mister, I ain't rightly allowed to carry passengers, you know. Charlie would give me a ride telling off. Oh, don't you worry about that. We're all friends here. Our mum said no hitting girls. Only bad boys do that. Our mum said, shut it. Shh! 
Ernie here doesn't want to listen to our troubles. Where to, mister? You know the way, Ernie. Behind the Unseen University. Where the students of magic are still hard at work on the night before Hogswatch. It's just a shame we don't have any radiation shielding, but... You want radiation shielding, Mr. Stibbons? Advice from Hexbursa. As the university won't supply our students with a thormic particle accelerator, we've started to build our own. The safety first, all that. Dean, have you seen the head of inadvisor the applied magic? I need some urgent advice. Uh, ask the uh, chair of indefinite studies. Um, Lecture in recent runes. Well, you see, it all depends. <coughs> <coughs> In my day, when I was an undergraduate, I wouldn't have been studying on Hogswatch tonight. It's just not natural. So I'd have been sick twice by now. <coughs> Bursa? Bursa? Oh, the dean. Oh. There you are. Our Chancellor. Huh? Members of the faculty, I've decided, as a Hogswatch present to myself, to open up the late Arch Chancellor Weatherwax's old bathroom. <laughs> so I don't have to sluice down with you fellas. I mean, it's unhygienic. You can catch stuff. Dear, I can't take you lot through the wall. Listen, Ernie. You will take us through, or, and I say this for very considerable regret, I'll have to kill you. But if I'm not taking you through the wall... What's the worst that can happen? You lose your job. Whereas if you don't, you'll die. Really, Mushroom? I think this is most unwise. Well, I said in the plans it was a bathroom. The chaps are all acting with some kind of torture chamber. Bathroom? Designed by bloody stupid Johnson? <laughs> the late Beckel Stuckley Johnson was the worst inventor in the world, Archchancellor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but not everything he made had a horribly fateful flaw. I mean, think of that thing they use in the kitchen for peeling potatoes, for example. You mean that thing with the brass plate on it saying, Improved Manicure Device? Yeah, but it's only water. Even old Johnson can't do much harm with water. Uh. <laughs> you go to it, lad. Do it, lad. So, uh, no, he just chucks it at the wall there and it goes tween. Really? May I try? Oh, isn't it nice, our oh, David? Yeah. And then you just drive forward. Oh, yeah, right. Quick mind, because it only stays open for a little while. Thank you very much, Ernie. Very much indeed. <coughs> Wasn't he dull? Supposed to be getting rid of the Hog Father. Why is he going to the Tooth Fairy's castle? The, the Tooth Fairy, ah, uh, another, another childish, childish belief. belief. Exactly. Very, Very elegant. It is. 
You have to start somewhere. Once you have their little minds in your grip, it's goodbye, Hogfather. It's him. Fingers and half cold, mister. Sorry. What do you want to go and do that for, eh? I did what he said. Could have killed me. Yes. I always keep a nip on me these cold nights. Keeps me spirits up. Indeed. How am I going to explain all this then, eh? Sorry. That was very rude of me. I wasn't paying attention. I said, what am I going to tell people? Letting some blokes ride off of me cart and eat as you like? That's going to be the sack for sure. Well, at least I have some good news, Ernest. And then again, I also have some bad news. So, I'm dead then? Correct. Now tell me about these blokes who stole your cart and killed you. Honestly, death gets worse and worse. He seems to like humans. So illogical. But the beauty of the assassin's plan is that he can't interfere. But death can go everywhere. No, not quite everywhere. Great job, but you look a right tit wearing these helmets. Tia Tammy. What's yours? Albert, something is not right. Thank you. 
This is the mythological person's room. How can one of them die? Questions first. Babble. Later. <laughs> now, Miss Butler, I'd like you to think of me as a friend. How are we doing, Mr. Modo? Takes a field and I've stoked the ball, as Mr. Rodge told us, sir. <laughs> you did read the sign on that door, Rick Cully. <laughs> you mean the sign which said, do not under any circumstances open this door? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Till it was sealed up for a reason. <laughs> oh. He wrote that to keep people out. Yes, that's right. That's what people do. I don't say I didn't warn you. My uh, Jeeves, that's the ticket. I still haven't worked out all the pipes, Lee. Oh, we'll find out. <laughs> don't you fear. <laughs> And the pumps, Mr. Wodo. <laughs> or a dwarf, of course, in your case. <laughs> She's a tooth fairy, but she is not the tooth fairy. Shh. <laughs> what do you expect in the Tooth Fairy's castle? I guess when the creep's just thinking about it. You don't have to think. You just have to do what I said. All of them? Every last one. Put them in a pile. Well, that's millions. Mr. Brown. I want you to unlock every door you can find. What's this really all about? No. Do you believe in things like the soul cake duck, the Sandman, the Tooth Fairy? Yeah. Even the Hulk Father. Because after we're finished here, not even he will. Onwards, 
Helsinki to the Hogfather's Castle of Bones. Wash off in a thousand years. <laughs> oh, even if I'm going to have the mother of all hangovers in the morning. bring all the presents to everyone all at the same time. Unless there are lots of Hogfathers. Look, you've always believed in the Hogfather, yes? Yes. Well, if you don't believe in him, he won't come down the chimney. It's a very small chimney. And a very small stocking if you don't go to sleep. And, um... Ho, ho, ho. This is Captain 
Any mustard? They're a treat with mustard. Apple sauce. Finding the beard a bit of a trial. Well, at least it's keeping you in the right frame of mind, Master. Big character, Johnny. But going down the chimney. Where's the sense in that? It's, it's got to be chimbleish, isn't it, eh? A bit like the beard, really. Do you think these little buggers would be writing to someone who can walk through walls if they knew? Oh, and that reminds me, the ho 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 could do with some more work, if you don't mind me saying so. Ho ho ho! No, no, no! No, you've got to put a bit more life in it, sir. Uh, no offence intended. You've got to do a big fat laugh, sir. No, like. Ho 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 ho! Like that, see? You gotta sound like you're pissing brandy and you're crapping plum pudding, sir. Give your pardon, my Kalachian. Yeah, yeah. How do you know all this? Well, I used to be young myself once, sir. Surprising as it may seem. This tid give me the creeps. Just keep going. Why are we pulling them all up? You don't want to know. Quicker all the teeth are in the pile, quick we're out of here with our money. No one ever laid a punch on Banjo since our man died. Tough but fair, your man. No, I recall that time she strangled Gossy Vaughn with his own leg. Yeah. Maybe the both of us could creep up on him and, uh... Yeah. I keep thinking about that glass eye watching me. I keep thinking it can see right in me head. Don't worry. He doesn't know what you're thinking. No, how do you know? You're still alive. These damn eyeballs are hard, aren't they? They're walnuts, not eyeballs. I don't want you back in my life, understand? Don't say you haven't been warned! Did you check the list? Couldn't really make head nor tail of it, to tell you the truth. I don't normally care if they be naughty or nice. <laughs> I can feel belief in the hog father fading. What's that? It looks very bad. No, no, it's just where something's been nibbling it, that's all. I mean the situation. I fear we may be too late. Oh well. Never say die, Master. That's our motto. I can't say it's ever really been mine.
better watch out. Because if the Hogfather still comes to town as a result of a magical misjudgment on your part, then you will no longer be my friend, Mr. Sidney. I understand, sir. Do you have a lot of friends, Mr. Sidney? Um, quite a few, actually. I don't have many. Don't seem to have the neck. On the other hand, I don't seem to have any enemies at all. Well, it's a very enemy-friendly spell, sir. That is very simple. And we'll make the pile of teeth very... Mr. Teeshine! <clears throat> Dangerous. Grandfather, this is Hogswatch. It's supposed to be jolly with mistletoe and holly and other things ending in Ollie. It's a time when people are meant to feel good about things and eat until they explode. A time when they want to see all their relatives. I mean, it's a time when humans are really human and they don't want a, a skeleton at the feast. Especially one, I might add, who's wearing a false beard and has got a damn cushion shoved up his robe. I mean, why? Albert said it would help me get into the spirit of the thing. Uh -huh. oh, wow. This is a real job. And I was looking forward to a real hog's watch where normal things happen with normal people in a normal house. And suddenly the old circus comes to town. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know what's going on, but you can just leave right now. <laughs> Albert. Buggery. <laughs> Master, I'm stuck. <laughs> The pixie. Oh, come along in, do. If the real Hogfather doesn't turn up soon, there's not going to be enough room for him. He won't be joining us. So what have you turned up for? And if it's for business reasons, I will add, then that outfit is in extremely poor taste. The Hogfather is unavailable. At Hogswatch? Yes. Why? He is... Let me see. There isn't an entirely appropriate human word, so let's settle for... Gone. Yes. He is gone. How can the Hogfather be gone? He's... Isn't he what you are? Anth... Anthropomorphic personification. Yes. He has become the spirit of Hogswatch. And while he's gone, you've taken over. That's sick. I see the girl writes in green crayon on pink paper with a mouse in the corner. The mouse is wearing a dress. I ought to point out that she decided to do that so that the Hogfather would think she was sweet, including the deliberate bad spelling. But look, why are you doing that? She says she is five years old. Seven. 
In cynicism, she's about 35. But why are you doing the... But she believes in the Hogfather. She'd believe in anything if there was a dolly in it for her. But you're not going to leave without telling me... And what are you doing here, Albert? I thought you'd die if you ever came back to the world. Ah, uh, but we are not in the world. We are in the special congruent reality created for the Hogfather. Normal rules have to be suspended. How else could anyone get around the entire world in one night? That's right. I'm one of the Hogfather's little helpers, me. It's official. I've got the little pointy green hat with the bell and everything. <laughs> have you been good, have you? Now we must be going. Happy Hog's Watch. And, um, oh yes. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> it's a nice drop of sherry, this. You've actually been drinking the actual drink little children leave for the actual Hogfather? Oh, yeah. Why not? He won't be drinking any more, will he? Eh? <coughs> not where he's gone. <clears throat> How many have you had, may I ask? Hmm? What? I don't know. I haven't been counting. One million eight hundred thousand seven hundred and six and 68,319 pork pies and one turnip. Oh, yeah, well, it looked pork pie-shaped. Well, then, everything does after a while, doesn't it? Why are you doing this? I am sorry I cannot tell you. Forget you saw me. It's not your business. Not my business? How can you say... You wanted to be normal. Good night, granddaughter. Sleep tight. I know I shall. <laughs> Pardon. There are a lot of doors. I hope this is the one. This isn't the room we're looking for. Just teeth in here. Keep going, Mr. Brown. Susan will try to find out what this is all about, you know. Oh, dear. Especially after you told her not to. You think so? Oh, yeah. Dear me, I still have a lot to learn about humans, don't I? Oh, I don't know. Obviously, it would be quite wrong to involve a human in all this. That is why, you will recall, I clearly forbade her to take an interest. Yes, yes, you did. Besides, it's against the rules. Yeah, well, of course, that's a shame, really, because she likes to break them, doesn't she? You might think I've already thought of that, but I couldn't possibly comment. Hmm. And we have much to do. We have the Hogfather's promises to keep. Right. He's done something to the real Hogfather.
Oh yes, she's mostly human. Oh good. Then can we go back to just concentrating on running the universe? Making sure that gravity works and that atoms spin? Yes. When there's not an atom of belief left in the world. And the Hog Father is just the beginning. What are you looking for, Mustrum? <laughs> My father always said when you see a lot of people bathing together, the Ruka Gnome is running around with his little sack. <laughs> Moto! Any sign of the Veruca Gnome down there, old boy? <laughs> Susan, you took your time. I don't do family reunions. This cushion is still uncomfortable. You're doing well, Master. Soot in the fireplaces. The footprints, the sweet cherries. The sleigh tracks all over the roofs. No, no, it's got to work. You think so? Oh, yeah. Oh, here's a little tip, though. Ho, 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 will do. Don't say, tower brief mortal. <laughs> Oh, really? Hmm. So many chimneys. It would be so much quicker if I lost the cushion. Yeah, well, I mean, if we're going to give Susan enough time to succeed, the little perishers need to believe in you, Master. No, I mean the Hogfather. So you've got to look the part, Master. I tell you what would be really good to boost belief is a public appearance. Oh, I don't normally do them. Yeah, but the Hogfather's more of a public figure, Master. I tell you what, one good public appearance will do more good than any amount of letting the kids see you by accident. Really? And I know just the place. <laughs> Thank you very much. Never 
everything tickety boom of course? Yes, Mr. Clown. Let's go slay them. I don't know if you noticed, Albert, but that was a pune or play on words. Ho, 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 sir. <laughs> that have done this, isn't it? They're out to ruin me. That's it. I don't mind the smell of the oranges and the damp trousers, but I ain't putting up with this. And he's not even doing it right. What? What's going on here, then? Hey? Come on. Ha! Who are you? You can call me Uncle Heavy. You're not a pixie. No, I'm a fairy cobbler, mister. Now, just keep quiet. And what do you want for Hog's Watch, small human? to you as it happens i know i used to live here remember but i can't read this the letters are all odd oh so i suppose now you'll be wanting me words of occult wisdom uh ethereal runes the old father ain't human after all uh, i suppose a bit of warm liver's out of the question On the second day of Hogs Watch, I set my true love back. A nasty little letter. <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah. Oh. What's your name then? Small time thief, are you? You ain't supposed to be able to see me. I'm a wizard. <laughs> we can see things that are really there, you know. Oh, what, what's in this bag? You really wish you hadn't, mister. Oh, will I? What are you doing here, young man? Well, you know the truth, fairy. Well, it's it's sort of like the same business. You mean you take things away? Not take away as such. It more sort of bring. Ah, bright new teeth. Like a new verrucas. Oh, <laughs> oh you're him. <laughs> I saw your piggy do away. Well, um, good. It had a great big... What do you want for Hog's Watch? She wants a... I want an army and a big castle with an active drawbridge and a sword. <clears throat> I think they're supposed to say thank you, Mars. Are you sure? People don't normally. Now I meant to the hog father, which is you, right? <laughs> oh. Sorry. Yes, of course. <clears throat> You're supposed to say thank you. Thank you. And be good. This is part of the arrangement. Yes. Then we have a contract. Ah, 
Lucas, eh? <laughs> Wish I knew why. You mean you don't know? No, suddenly I wake up and I'm the Verrucano. <laughs> Strange. Um, anyway, amazing bathroom, isn't it? <laughs> it's even got a special pot for your toenail clippings. Special pot for your toenail clippings? Well, you can't be too careful. Get hold of something like somebody's nail clippings, hair, teeth. You've got them under your control. I mean, that's real old magic. Children of the world, prepare to think as you are told. Mr. Sidney, your big no misjudgments magic moment. It's a sword. They're not meant to be safe. But she's a child. It's educational. What if she cuts herself? That will be an important lesson. Really? Oh well. It's not for me to argue, I suppose. And she doesn't want all that other stuff. She's a girl. And anyway, I can't afford big, posh stuff like that. I thought I gave it away. You do? You do? You don't! That's our merchandise! You don't just give it away! Hogwarts isn't about giving everything away. I mean, yes, you, you do give things away, but you have to buy them first. You mean... This is all free. It would seem to be. So, Mr. Stevens, this, this thing's a great big artificial brain there. You could think of it like that. Of course, Hex doesn't actually think. Not as such, it just uh, appears to be thinking. Amazing. You mean it gives the impression of thinking, but really it's just a show? Uh, yes. Oh, just like everyone else then, eh? Yeah. Oh, I knew it came here for something. Oh. <laughs> Now, this little chappy is the Veruca Gnome, who's just popped into existence to be with us on Hogs Watch Night, being the most magical night of the year. Last year's occult rubbish piling up, I thought you chaps might like to check up on it, eh? The Veruca Gnome? <laughs> but it makes about as much sense as anything else, doesn't it? After all, there's a tooth fairy out there. Makes one wonder why... There's a god of wine and not a god of hangovers. Anyone here a noise, sir? Sorry, Master Chancellor? A sort of... Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> like a lot of um, ding ding bells. Didn't hear anything like that, sir. Oh. Well, where was I? Um, oh, yes, well, I mean, nobody's ever... Seen a Veruca gnome until tonight. <laughs> I've never heard of me until tonight. And I am me. Well, then, um, <clears throat> we'll see what Hex can find out, Arch Chancellor. Good man. <laughs> to the bottom of all this. None of this is right. Everyone knows he's just a jolly old fat man who hands out presents to kids. He wasn't always so jolly. 
You know how it is. Do I? Well, it's like, you know, industrial retraining. Even gods have to move with the times. You see, your og father was probably just your basic winter demiurge. You know, blood on the snow, making the sun come up. So there has to be blood to make the sun come up? Hmm. Well, it starts off with animal sacrifice, you know, and some big airy animal to death, that kind of stuff. Very folkloric, very mythic. Didn't stop at animals, neither. They had sacred kings, the strongest and the best. Died in the dark time of year to give life to the unconquered sun. And in a way, the Og Father was all of them. And then? And then some bright spark thought, hey, looks like that damn sun comes up anyway. So how come we're giving those druids all this free grub? The world moves on, and he's got to find a new job. So he started as an animal sacrifice to make the sun come up. Exacto mundo. And now he gives out presents. <laughs> Top of the evening, Squire. I am Corporal Nobbs of the Watch, and this is Constable Visit, sir. I want you to arrest him. Arrest who, sir? Oh, oh Father. What for, sir? And he, he's sitting up there as bold as brass in his grotto, giving away presents. Not quite up to speed yet, sir. I thought the hog father was supposed to give away stuff, isn't he? But this one's an imposter! You know, I always thought that. I thought the hog father spends two weeks sitting in a wooden grotto in some shop in Ank Morpork. <laughs> and his busy time, too, yeah, not likely. He's not the hog father we usually have! You mean a different imposter, not the real imposter at all? Yes. No. Arrest the Hogfather style of thing. Yes. On the Hog's Watch night. Yes. Or giving away presents. <laughs> In front of all these kiddies. Yes. In your shop. You think that might look a bit. Bad. Difficult to see how it would look good, sir. Could you not do it surreptitiously? Oh, well, yes. Surreptition, yes. We could give that a try. You won't find me ungrateful. <laughs> In Omnia, we call Hogswatch Night the fast of St. Ossery. But it is not an occasion for superstition and crass commercialism. I used to hang up my stocking every Hogswatch regular. All that ever happened was my dad was sick in it once. I'm going in. There seems to be a, a, a thalmic surge from somewhere. It's as if something is, is, is triggering random bursts of stray belief. It's the expression on their little faces I like. Yeah, a sort of cross between fear and awe. They don't know whether to laugh, cry or wet their pants. Yeah. <laughs> now that is what I call Relief. Mm -hmm. Next. And what's your name, little person? Nobby Nobs, Hogfather. 
And have you been a good boy, a good war, a good no, a good individual? Yes. So why isn't it working? Ah, the, the chalk just got a bit scuffed. You know, when we were piling up the the things. You sure that's what it is? Well, uh... What about the spell? Oh, that'll go on forever. Simple ones do. It's just a state change powered by the... the, the... It just keeps going. Oh, that's very good, Mr. Sidney. Because if the sympathetic magic doesn't work, you will find me very... unsympathetic. Yeah. What happened? What happened? It's this. Just think. This whole business. It is the worship of idols. It's a genuine. Burly and strong in the arm. Double action. Triple cantilever crossbow with a polished walnut stock. And silver engraved facings. Aren't we going to arrest the imposter couple? You're foreign, washpot. I can't expect you to know the real meaning of Hogswatch. On the whole, I think that went very well, don't you? Yes, Master. And I think I've got the laugh working really well now. Ho, ho, ho! Yes, sir. Very jolly. Tomorrow morning they'll believe all right. They'd better, because if they don't, then there won't be a tomorrow morning. So for the sun to come up tomorrow morning, the Hogfather has to be alive. Precisamente. But what if he's dead? This was going to be your big moment. Such a shame. Pretty lights. Thousands here. So this stuff. It's just paper. The title deeds for properties. And they're better than money. So if we steal them, do they become ours? Is that a trick question? Anyway, let's get going. You won't miss a few well. Gentlemen. We were just, uh, we were just 
piling up the stuff. Huh. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I know people say I kill them as soon as look at them. And in fact, I much rather kill you than look at you, Mr. Lily White. You're thinking the banjo's gonna help you. That's how it's always been, isn't it? The banjo's my friend now. Banjo was the heart of a little child. I believe I have too. Help him, Banjo. As far as this goes, I really have no use for it. It's only pillow money. Something much more interesting has become apparent. is someone who rolls his own. Control the inner child, and it'll even give you its teeth. And somewhere in this tower, you're gonna help me find someone who can use it. Who can use it to give me the world. So is he saying to take the money and go? Damn, he's a bloody stupid. Daddy? I say, it's not what you think. Yes, it is. Mr. Brown, there's one door you haven't found. Find the Tooth Fairy's secret room, and when he dies, then just think what I can make the Kittywinks think.
on my head. Are you the hot Which one? That one or this one? <laughs> Happy hop wash, everybody. <laughs> unlocked it. And Banjo's opened it. I'm not telling you anything. Who are you anyway? I'm glad you asked. I'm your worst nightmare. Oh, you mean the one, the one with the, oh, with the giant cabbage and the, the kind of wearing knife thing? Sorry, no, not that one. I'm the one where this man comes out of nowhere and kills you, stone dead. Oh, well, that one. But that's not. Very... Rather a charitable act there, I feel. But it is Nelly Hawk's watch, after all. Scythe job then. They took the teeth. All of them. They just walked in and they. they no, wait! Wait, wait! Where did he come from? A place I cannot go. No, oh, well, even if you could go there. We've got our work cut out here, keeping the Hogfather's sheep warm. If what's happening in the Tooth Fairy's castle isn't stopped, then everything we've been doing is a waste of time. And if they get to the Tooth Fairy, they will be able to control all human belief. Susan gets there first. Yes, well, it's coming along well. Very impressive. Well done. The cloak, the white horse, the granddaughter. I need you to wake him up. His name's Billius. He's 
the O God of hangovers. Something nasty is happening tonight. I'm hoping he can tell me what it is, but he's got to be able to think straight first. And you brought him here? Why are you doing this? I mean, I was a bit behind with the teeth, I know. I don't know. When there was nearly $13 in pillow money owing, I admit, but I signed the form GD90 about collection and answer the question? I don't know. I've never been here before. And your boss probably doesn't realize how irritating you are. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Or Miss Butler. It was only a bit of loose change. And I really, I was going to... Tim Scrooge, I I'm not the least. This is really, really stupid. I think the tradition got started when everybody had their big chimbles, Master. <laughs> ah. Indeed. It's only a mercy it's unlit. doesn't have to share. A huge meat pie. A sugar mouse. A lot of toys. And a puppy called Scruff. Ah, oh, how sweet. I shall wipe away a tear. Because what he's getting, see, is this little wooden toy and an apple. But the letter clearly. I know. It's the socio economic factors. I mean, the world would be in a hell of a mess, wouldn't it, eh? If everybody got what they asked for. I gave them what they wanted in the store. Yeah, but what good is a god that gives you everything that you want, hmm? You have me there. Ah, yeah, no. It's the hope that's important. Oh, oh yes. It's a big part of belief, is the hope. I mean, say, you give people jam today and they'll just sit there and eat it, won't they? But jam tomorrow? Ah, no. That'll keep them going forever. And you mean that because of this, the poor get poor things and the rich get rich things? Oh, yeah. That's the meaning of hog's watch, isn't it, Master? But I'm the hog father. At the moment, I mean. Well, it makes no difference. <laughs> I remember when I was a nipper. It was one hog's watch, it was. And I had my heart set on this huge model horse in this shop. It was what I always wanted. Someone was in there buying it, and, you know, just for a second, I thought it really was going to be for me. But it wasn't. I spent hours with me nose pressed up against the window. Till someone heard me calling and unfroze me. <laughs> yes, I would have killed for that horse. But you know what? I still hung up my stocking on Hog's Watch Eve. And do you know why? Because I had hope. Yeah. And the next morning, our dad had put in my stocking a little wooden horse that he'd carved his very own self. Ah, and that was worth more than all the expensive toy horses in the world. No, because you're a selfish little bugger when you're only seven. 
<laughs> it's only grown-ups that think like that. This is wrong. It is unfair. <laughs> well, that's life, isn't it, Master Ring? But I am not. This is supposed to be the season to be jolly. <laughs> and other things ending in Ollie. Take her out of vocal range. Mr. Brown, your big moment. Break me out the real tooth fairy. Lecturer in recent rooms, can't you do something more, well, magical? Well, I suppose some sturdy divisor would do it. <laughs> you would end up with a large beaker filled with all the nastiness. It's not difficult at all, if you don't mind the side effects. <laughs> Tell me about the side effects. Well, the main one is that the rest of him would end up in a somewhat larger beaker. <laughs> Oh. Alive? Uh, broadly, yes. <laughs> Living tissue, certainly. And definitely sober. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why don't we just mix up absolutely everything and see what happens? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be worth a try. <laughs> Thank you, madam. Is this going to take much longer? We may not have much time. Oh, you can't be too careful. Yeah. <laughs> in the universe. And it'll blow your head clean off. Oh, it's not safe to drink it if the sweat is still condensing on the bottle. Of it. On the other hand, <laughs> if it is a kill or cure remedy, then the, we are given the possibility that the patient is immortal, probably under a winner. Wonder if it's gone critical yet. <laughs> represent pure sobriety. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, 
I'll try it. He has no memory of existing before appearing at the Hogfather's castle. You mean, like this fellow? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Gods and gnomes don't just appear en masse for no reason. <laughs> Bring me, let's see, um, 20 pints of lager, some pepper vodka, and a bottle of coffee liqueur. <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't have you sobered up just so you could go on a binge. What? You don't drink. I don't? Oh. Yeah. I need you to help me. Oh. I'm afraid I did it, didn't I? I, um, I said something to young Stibbons about uh, drinking and hangovers, didn't I? You mean you created it? You tell just like that? Oh, I find that very hard to believe, Mr. Mm -hmm. Good job nobody mentioned the hair loss fairy then. <laughs> <laughs> I am not losing my hair. Mm. It is just. Very finely spaced. Yes, half on your head and half on your hair brush. <laughs> <laughs> For the last time, I am not! <laughs> I wish I knew where that was coming from. We need a bigger brain for this. That thinking engine of yours working, Ponder? Uh, Hex is resting, asked Chancellor. Uh, can you hear me in there? You don't have to shout, Arch-Chancellor. What is that noise all about? Where exactly were you before I found you in the snow? Anywhere where drink had been consumed in beastly quantities some time previously, you could say. Mm. Aha. So, you were an imminent vital force, eh? Oh, sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? So, so, when we joked about the hair loss fairy, it suddenly focused on the Dean's head. <laughs> <laughs> You're calling things into being. I personally have always wondered if there was an eater of socks. You know how there's always one missing. Ah, to the laundry! <laughs> Tell me again who these people are. Some of the cleverest men in the world. And I'm sober, am I? What is 
said a ridiculous thing on your head. I don't know, sir. What? What is it? It says here, <clears throat> if found, please return to the Tooth Fairy's castle. Well, thank goodness the Tooth Fairy already exists, eh? Tooth Fairy. Oh, you see her around a lot these days. Or them, rather. It's a sort of franchise operation to collect children's teeth in exchange for money. And she has a castle. She sounds great. <laughs> Actually, I do remember one thing. When I appeared at the Hog Father's house, there was this drunken little fellow in, in a pointy hat. <laughs> I thought it was just the drink talking, but he did mention something about the... Permanent end of perpetual servitude for the little helpers of all fantasy personification. <laughs> Including the tooth fairy. Where did you find this? What is the geographical location of the Tooth Fairy's castle? Now I'm feeling normal. Can I come with you? This is not a normal situation. Look, I think I better tell you. My grandfather is death. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Death. You know, death. The robes, the scythe, the white horse, bones. Death. But at the moment, he's acting rather strange. I just want to make sure I've got this clear. You think your grandfather is death, and you think he's acting strange. Look, death adopted my mother. He then took on a human apprentice. They fell in love, and I'm the result. This is fascinating. Let's just say I picked up a few strange genetic knacks along the way. Dangerous. I hope so. Wait, I could help you. Oh. Would you be any good in a fight? Uh, yes, I could be sick on people. Uh. Inexplicable actions to human shaped entities. Such examples are the Humphather, the Tooth Fairy, and Death. Well, it's all very well, but I'm damn sure there's never been a, an eater of socks or a no god of hangovers. I think it works like this. What we're getting is the personification of forces, just like Hex said. A bit like the Hogfather. I mean, when you're a kiddie, it's, uh, it's as good an explanation as any as where presents come from. <laughs> but why is it happening now? It beliefs causing new creatures to appear. You could put it like that. 
said is a finite quantity of elites in the universe. Well, certainly people can only believe in so many things. Follow said, a major focus of belief is removed. There will be spare belief. All right, then, well, so what are people not believing in all of a sudden? Oh. Out of cheese, error, melon, 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 meat, new from the start. It's a hog's watch. I suppose the hog father is around, isn't he? <clears throat> I like this job. Dear, oh dear. Excuse me. Yes. This will show you. match girls dying in the snow is all part of the spirit of fox watch master you see people hear about it and they say well we might be as poor as a disabled banana and only can afford to eat mud and boots but see how much better off we are than the poor little match girls so that makes them happy and grateful for what they have got i know what the spirit of fox watch is albert Father gives presents. There's no better present than a future. philosophy. I can find the square root of 27.4 in my head. I shouldn't be doing this. It's not as if I've hung a stocking up. There'd be some point if... We've been chosen to do a bit of charity. Well, I don't call it very charitable, just dumping someone on people like this. I don't know. Some people wouldn't know the real meaning of Hog's Watch if it jumped up and clocked them in the gulf. Is 
This is a child's painting. Twyla paints like that. I painted like that. Grandfather saved some of my drops. Come on, let's find the house. What house? There's always a house. I was told you're the best locksmith in the city. Yes, but locks don't generally alter themselves while you're working on them, that's what I'm saying. Interesting point, sir. Possibly <clears throat> you're referring to my theory that humans may have in fact ascended from apes. <laughs> a bold hypothesis, which, if the Grants Committee could mm. just see their way clear to letting me hire a boat and sail around mm. to the islands. I just thought he might deliver alphabetically. Let me see now. Who the hell are you? I'm the Hogfather, of course. Um, ho, ho, ho. You look extremely thin in the face. I, I'm, uh, I'm a bit ill. Oh. Terminally, I would say. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> it's a false beard. No, it's not. It's got hooks for the ears. <laughs> they must have given you a spot of trouble there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pillow. <laughs> I thought there were seven locks. Yeah, but they're half magic, half real, and half not there. I mean, there's parts of them don't exist half the time. I thought you could open any lock anyone ever made. Made by humans and most dwarves. Don't know what made these. You never said anything about magic. That's a shame. Then really, I have no more need of your services. You may as well go back home. What about my money? Of course. You should get what you deserve. You must think I was born yesterday, Mr. Teacup. I'm leaving, right? But what's coming to me? And you ain't stopping me. Banjo certainly ain't. I knew his old ma in the good old days. You think you're nasty? You think you're mean? My lily might have tear your ears off and spit them in your eyes. You cocky little devil. I remember you when you was a little Banjo. I used to sit you on my knees. And you. <gasps> there you are. 
Where's all these shadows coming from? It's giving me the creeps, and it's all your fault. Oh, yeah? So it wasn't you who said, wow, $10,000, count me in. Yeah, but I didn't know there was going to be all this creepy stuff. I want to go home. That's even cleaning with a child. That's the two theories castle. It's teeth. And I should be scared? There's nothing that scary about teeth. Did I say I was scared? I, I must just be hung over again. old magic it isn't even magic anymore if you've got a piece of someone's hair nail clipping or tooth you can control them don't tell me someone's what's that shadow this place is alive and it's protecting itself to the other fellow. Well... The Hogfather has enemies. What did he do, Mr. Chimney? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, there's people down there, Mr. Tea Time. Well, just do away with them. Well, uh... One of them's a, a girl. Then do away with them. Politely. Keep going. Quicker.
But Walter. When I was a kid, we had this big wardrobe, and it had this this on the door. It had this face, and that night it. Whispered things. Who's that moving up there? I think they saw us. And if their tooth fairies has been a really stupid equal opportunities policy. You go that way. I'll go. This Why way. don't we stay together? What's got into you? Hmm? This is a children's place. The rules are what children believe. Well, that's a relief. You think so? It's impossible to die here. My grandfather doesn't figure in a child's world. That man who fell down the stairs looked pretty dead to me. Oh, you die, but not here. You... Let's see. Yes. You go somewhere else. Away. Aren't you yes, sick? Yes, yes. Oh. And when you came for Twyla's last tooth, you were so shocked that I could see you. Oh, yes, and I Look, saw... Look, we may not have a lot of time. Is this... The Tooth Fairy. A Tooth Fairy. Do you drink at all? No, I don't. Not touch alcohol at all? Never. My dad's very strict about that sort of thing. Nice castle. Can we get on? Good. Who brought you here, Violet? I don't know. Oh, but he's dressed like an assassin. OK, you two stay here. I'll go and find him. And I'll look after Violet. <laughs> That's the fourth lock open. I commend your expertise. And the others? Do you know exactly what's in here, Mr. Teatme? Logically. If you're the guardian of children's beliefs, and this is your castle. And I come across as securely locked the door as this. And not to thoroughly investigate would. Like elegance. What's that sound? That sound. That sound. Like all scissors scraping. Have you ever heard of the auditors? Uh, I suppose that the bursar might have done. Not auditors of money. Auditors of reality. They are the civil service of everything. And they want to get rid of us. They want humans to be less creative. The Hogfather is a symbol of this. Strange thinking. They hate the way humans make up stories about the universe. I can't think why. <laughs> anyway, wh why are you doing this job? Someone must. It is vitally important. 
Before dawn, there must be enough belief in the Hogfather. <laughs> Why? So that the sun will come up. <laughs> I seldom joke. What sort of godding do you do? Oh, I'm the, uh, I'm the old god of hangovers. A god of hangovers? Oh, how awful! I suppose so. You're more cut out to be one of those important gods. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> What's he say? Look at his name. You leave him alone, you! He's a god! Dear me, out of thunderbolts, are we? Well, you know, I've never killed a god. was right, Arch-Chancellor. Hex? Who is Hex? Um, he's the biggest thinker in the world. I would like to meet this Mr. Hex. Gentlemen, I think he got here by magic. <laughs> Where did he go? They say you are the biggest thinker in the world, but do you also believe? Extend logically the result of the human race ceasing to believe in the Hogfather. Will the sun come up? Answer. be prevented. Answer. Regular and consistent belief. Good. I have a task for you, thinking engine. Believe in the Hogfather. Do you believe? Answer. Do you believe? Answer. Let me see. 
How old are you? And have you been naughty or nice? Skull and bone decoration. Death himself, second favorite weapon. Am I right? Oh my, it must be Hogswatch. And this must mean that you are Susan, the famous granddaughter, nobility. I bow. But I'm afraid you do something. To me. I, I managed to open the fifth lock, no problem. They're just they're just based on Woodley's occult sequence. <laughs> How do you know who I am? Easy. Twerp's peerage. Family motto. Non Temetus Monsieur. Your father was well known. Went a long way very fast. As for your grandfather, honestly, that motto, fear not the reaper, is that good taste? Of course, you don't need to fear him, do you? Why do you? I don't know what you're talking about. Who are you, anyway? I beg your pardon. My name's Teatami. Jonathan Teatami. At your service. You mean... like around four o'clock in the afternoon? No. I did say Teatami. Please don't try to break my concentration by annoying me. How you getting on, Mr. Sidney? <laughs> if it's just according to Woodley's sequence, number six should be cut from blue-green light. Do you think your grandfather will try to rescue you? Then now I have his sword. You see? I wonder. All fingers and thumbs, Mr. Sidney. Uh, I've managed to open the sixth lock, Mr. Teatime. Really? But it may not be all important now. Thank you, anyway. You've been most helpful. Um... Yes, you may go. Is that all you're here for? A robbery? Like a petty thief? A thief? Me? I'm not a thief, madam. No. These gentlemen are thieves. That's Medium Dave. And Exhibit B, he's Banjo. He can talk. <gasps> Who are you? I'm the incognito. You look like a wizard to me. Did you suck your thumb when you were little? Nope. Suck the so much. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Kids believe all kinds of crap, and I'm a grown up. <laughs> No more hog father. And that's only the start. I'll be able to make people believe anything I want. What's this? 
You said no more hog father. He does know what we've been doing here, doesn't he? You did tell him. There's got to be a hog father. There's always a hog father. She did it. She killed him. No, I didn't. He did. Didn't. Did. Didn't. Did. What's this about the hog father? I don't think he's dead, but tea time has made him very ill. Who cares? When this is over, Banjo, you'll have as many presents as you want. Trust me. There has to be a hog father, else there's no hog's watch. It's just another solar festival. Banjo and me are going. Banjo, you're coming with me right now. Grab her, Banjo. It's all her fault. Our oh, mum said no hitting girls. No touching them or pulling them air. She's not a girl. She's a freak. I think I know you, Tea Time. You're the mad kid they're all scared of, right? And Joe. He said grab her. Our mum said... The kid who didn't know the difference between chucking a stone at a cat and setting it on fire. I said shut up. Get her, Banjo. The kind of little boy who looks up dolls' dresses. He didn't. My mum said... Ah, uh, to blazes with your ma'am! What did you say about our mum? I bet no one wanted to play with you. Not the kid with no friends. Banjo, you do as I tell you. I'm a... I'm a... Our mum said... Have you been a bad boy, Banjo? You've been letting him get into trouble again, eh, Davy? You have, ain't ya? No, Mum. No, Mum. No, you need a good idea, Banjo. Sorry, 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 Mum. You've been playing with girls again. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, ma'am. No, no, sorry, ma'am. Sorry. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. Oh, no. I don't think so. This place it gets into your head, doesn't it? Finds out how to deal with you. And I'm in touch with my inner child. It's so much fun. Pulling girls' hair. That's bad. I'm gonna have so much fun with this. So late. You wouldn't dare use it. My grandfather will come after you. He comes after everyone. He's very single-minded. I'll be ready for him. Hey. It doesn't work here. There's no death here. Hi, inner child. I'm the inner babysitter. Spell. Breathing spell. 
Spold's forthright respirator, perhaps. I think I've got it written down somewhere. <laughs> Come on, you chaps. Give me some space. <laughs> Excuse me, um, excuse me, but this is vitally important for the advancement of natural philosophy. Did you see any bright lights? Was there a shining tunnel? Did you see... Did... What is all this, Mr. Stippens? Put the damn quill away! This must be the Unseen University. And you're all... Wizards. There was a sword. Oh, yes. It's uh, fallen on the floor. <laughs> Did I do that? He really must be off. <laughs> well, he won't get far. The, the, the main doors are locked in accordance with Aunt Chancellor Spode's rules. <laughs> won't get far. No. While holding a sword which appears to be able to cut through anything. You can get into trouble hitting girls. No playing with girls. What am I gonna do now? Sorry, dear. You're not the Tooth Fairy. Oh, I am, dear. Oh, Grandma, what big teeth you have. You've even got a shawl. Oh, dear. I don't understand, lovey. You forgot the rocking chair. I always thought there'd be a rocking chair. I don't think you're real. It's not a little old woman in a shawl running this place. You're out of my head. That's how you defend yourself. You poke around in people's heads and find the things that work. No. It's horrible, but it doesn't frighten me. I like spiders. Dogs, no. I like rats. Rats are fine. <laughs> Sorry, is anyone frightened? Of rats? I. I. You're a bogeyman, aren't you? Not a bee. 
The first bogeyman. You look terrible. Oh, thank you very much. I mean ill. I used to jump out on them and say boo. Mm -hmm. But then I got to like them. Only children were frightened of me. I mean, what's to be scared of? Horns, pony arms. But then I discovered that there were much worse things than me. And I wanted to protect the children, keep them safe from all the really bad things. So I built all this to be a safe place. And the teeth? <laughs> if you leave all those teeth around, anything could happen. Anything nearly did. So, you are the Tooth Fairy then? Yes. I... Uh, oh, well, then they came. Stealing. Oh. I'm too weak to look after them anymore. Uh, you don't die here. Just get old. Listening to the laughter. Uh. Don't worry about the teeth. I'll make them safe again. I think it would be a good idea if you did the Tooth Fairy's job, Banjo. Do you, do you think that'll be all right? Uh, won't the Tooth Fairy mind? You... do it until she comes back. So who's going to tell me what to do? No one's ever going to tell you what to do again, Banjo. Thanks, miss. I'll keep the teeth safe. Uh, miss? Yes, Banjo. Can I have a puppy? I had a kitten. Barman drowned it because it was dirty. I think it'll turn up quite soon, Banjo. Thanks, miss. Violet talked about it, and we thought we ought to come back and help. It's okay. They're all gone. Oh. And Banjo needed a new job. Huh. That's funny. So does Billy. <laughs> Look, why don't you two make yourselves useful and help Banjo clear up this mess? He's pretty much running the place now. <laughs> He's in charge. We'd love to help Banjo. Together. Good. Have fun. Now I'm going home. This is a hell of a way to spend Hog's Watch. Grandfather? What are you doing here? It is not over. 
You must bring the Hog Father home. These look like the mountains where the Castle of Bones was. They are. It's a pig. A boar. This boar is the... Yes. The Hog Father as he began. And the dogs. These are not real dogs. If they catch him, he won't just die. He will never be. We'll stop them. This is a human thing. The auditors are desperate now. They are determined to destroy the Hogfather at whatever cost. Resist it in the end. A mistake, I fancy. It gets under your skin, life. Speaking metaphorically, of course. And you see, the more you struggle for every moment, the more alive you stay. Which is where I come in. As a matter of fact. You can't do this. There are rules. Yes. There are rules. But you broke them. How dare you? How dare you? And now there remains only one final question. Have you been naughty? Or nice. Oh, oh, oh.
Dying's not how it's supposed to go. Sorry. about wraps it up for this dress. I'd just like to ask, purely out of academic interest, you were sure I was going to survive, were you? I was quite confident. Good. Now, tell me... What would have happened if you hadn't saved him? Yes. The sun would not have risen. Then what would have happened? A mere ball of flaming gas would have illuminated the world. All right, I'm not stupid. You're saying that humans need fantasies to make life bearable? No. Humans need fantasy to be human. To be the place where the falling angel meets the rising ape. With tooth fairies, hog fathers. Yes. As practice, you have to start out learning to believe the little lies. So we can believe the big ones? Yes. Justice, mercy, duty, that sort of thing. They're not the same at all. You think so? Then take the universe and grind it down to the finest powder, and sieve it through the finest sieve, and then show me one atom of justice, one molecule of mercy. And yet, you try to act as if there is some ideal order in the world, as if there is some, some rightness in the universe by which it may be judged. But people have got to believe that. What's the point? You need to believe in things that aren't true. How else can they become? to visit for Hogswatch dinner. Albert is frying a pudding. I... Uh, well, they're really expecting me here. 
Would you like a drink before you go? A cup of cocoa would be appropriate in the circumstances. Right. There are biscuits in the tin on the mantelpiece. Susan's got a poker, you know. My goodness me. I thought all of you knew that by now. Indeed. Last week you picked a bogey up by its nose. I'll give Gray his stocking, then I'll come and watch. Susan. Possible to kill death? Hmm. This must be a very special sword. And it certainly works here. And of course, it might well not be regarded as murder. Possibly it is a civic act. It would be as they say. The big one. You may have some personal knowledge about your vulnerability, but I'm pretty certain that Susan here would quite definitely die. So I'd rather you didn't try any last minute stuff. I am last minute stuff. I don't remember them asking for anything that made a noise. Oh, there has to be something in the stocking that makes a noise. Otherwise, what is 4.30 a.m. for? There are children? Oh, yes. Of course. Call them. Certainly not. You'll be instructive. Educational. And when your adversary is death, he can't help but be the good guy. Call them. Gawain? Twyla? Come in. Come in. Curly haired tots. We got this boy man. What should we do with him, huh? It's only a skeleton. Yes. A nasty, creepy, horrible skeleton. Scary, huh? He's eating a biscuit. A creepy, bony man in a black robe. You're fidgeting with that kettle. So I expected thinking of doing something creative. Put it down, please. Slowly. Hm. That's not very creepy. It's just bones. It's just standing there. It's not even making woo-woo noises. And anyway, you're creepy. Your eyes weird. Really? And let's see how creepy I can be.
gone through you. So many rips and things. Yeah, and the kills monsters. Stop time now. You winked at me. I thought you had a plan. Indeed, oh yes. I planned to see what you would do. What? I did add the sparkly stars and the noise, though. I thought they would be appropriate. And if I hadn't done anything? I dare say I would have thought of something at the last minute. That was the last minute. There is always time for another last minute. Stop playing dead, Mr. Teatame. You got it right? Of course. I'll take care of the body. That will prevent inconvenient questions. Um... You did know the poker would go through me. I was quite confident. Ah. I have made this for you. Oh. Thank you. What is it? Albert said there ought to be snow on it but it appears to have melted. It is, of course, a Hogswatch card. Oh. There should have been a Robin on it as well, but I had considerable difficulty in getting it to stay on. Ah. It was not at all cooperative. Really? It did not seem to get into the Hogswatch spirit at all. Grandad. Yes? Why? I mean, why did you do all this? Human beings make life so interesting. Do you know that in a universe so full of wonders, they have managed to invent boredom? Quite astonishing. Oh. Well then, uh, happy Hogswatch. Yes. Grandad. Happy Hogswatch. Happy Hog's Watch, and good night, children, everywhere.
milking horse in the window. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, that's a, a special order I made for Lord Rodney. How much would this lordship have paid you? Twelve dollars. I will give you fifty. Would you like me to wrap it up for you, sir? No. I will take it as it is. Thank you. Incidentally, there is a small boy out there with his nose frozen to the window. Some warm water should do the trick. Happy Hogwatch, sir. Thank you.